Hey, what's up guys? If you're transitioning into the ICU as a brand new nurse or transitioning into the ICU uh, from another specialty, then this video is for you. We're gonna go over a couple of disease processes that are really important to get the foundation on as a new nurse in the ICU. And we're gonna briefly go over it, but you need to know the topics that we're gonna hit on. So be sure to have your pen and paper and enjoy the video. What's going on guys? This is Cordero. Welcome back to A Couple Nurses. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top three disease processes that you should know as an ICU nurse. I'm gonna be basing today's video based off of my nursing experience. I'm coming up on two years of experience in the ICU. And these are the disease processes that I think are most important in building a foundation if you're gonna work in the ICU environment. Of course, if there are specialties out there, burn units, trauma units, um, cardiothoracic units, neurology units that are all specialized in these certain places. But the thing about medical surgical is you, you get a good little mixed bag of everything. And this is just based off of my experience. If you haven't already, check out our other video, the top five IV medications that we use in the ICU, continual infusions, super important stuff. And today we're gonna to review uh, this question because I got it from Thick Sliced Basic. <laughs> His name on Instagram is Thick Sliced Bacon, thick with two C's. This was actually a nursing student that was with me a couple months back when I was on one of my travel assignments. And he told me today he got into the ICU and I was gonna hop on a call with him, you know, have a, a real deep brainstorming session with him, go deep. I was like, you know what, let me just make a video because I can help way more people. And this is for you, bro. So I hope you find this video and it helps you. Before we really dive into today's content, be sure to like, share, subscribe. Of course, always comment nurses rock down at the bottom if you find any value in this comment, in this content. Okay, we're gonna go over three disease processes. I'm not gonna go into them in depth because that's like a whole session that you have to sit down and really dive deep if you wanna study. There's four things that you need to be thinking about when we go over these disease processes. What's the pathophysiology? Dang, like, like bright, sheesh. I'm really blinding me. Okay, again, so the four things that you need to know about each of these disease processes, and really any disease process, is the pathophysiology. So what's going on behind the scenes? Why is why is the patient in this situation on a deeper level? Why, why is the patient presenting with the way that they're presenting? The second thing that you need to know about is the signs and symptoms. You really wanna know what stage of the disease process is the patient in? Is this the acute phase? Are we starting to bounce back? Are things getting worse? How is the patient gonna present? What are the signs and symptoms that we're gonna be looking for? The third thing you wanna be thinking about are diagnostic tests. So these are the lab work that you wanna be looking at, whether it be CBCs, BMPs, HNHs, uh, uh, coag coagulation studies, PT, PTINR. So you wanna know with each of the disease processes, where the lab works that, that are associated with it, X-rays, CT scans, all that good stuff. And then finally, another important component here are the inter interventions. So as a nurse, what is your job and how do you care for these patients in the best way that, uh, that you can? All right, the very first disease process is shock. I think shock is super important. Then I'm talking about all kinds of shock. So we're talking about cardiogenic shock, septic shock, neurological shock, hypovolemic shock. These are, you already wanna know what's the difference in each one of these shocks. So the blood in your body, for some reason, is not sustaining a strong enough heartbeat to perfuse oxygenated blood to your organs, right? And you really wanna know why each one of these are happening. Again, what is the patient gonna look like? What are some tests you wanna run? And then what are you gonna do as a nurse to care for this patient? Another big disease process that I think is pretty important, and we go over it pretty hard in nursing school, is myocardial infarctions. So again, what do these patients look like? And, and really to understand that in the ICU, you need to learn how to read a 12 lead EKG. This is one thing that I wish somebody would have told me early on. It took me a while to really start understanding the 12 lead EKG. But I feel like if you can set that foundation early on in your ICU career, it'll, it'll be great. It'll be great. You just need to do it. I really suggest that you learn how to read it. You'll be able to know where the infarct is happening on the heart. Is it on the bottom part of the heart? Is it on the right side of the heart, the left side of the heart? When you can read the 12 lead EKG, you'll be able to say, hey, this is an infarct on this side of the heart and that's a pretty powerful thing. It'll be best for you to learn how to take care of MIs. 
What are the things that you need to do in the acute phase? And then after the patient gets an intervention, what kind of intervention do they get? And then after they get the intervention, how do we assess if the patient is getting better or worse? And then the final thing that it's really important to know if you're in the ICU is the disease process of respiratory failure. A lot of these patients are on ventilators. Why are they on ventilators? They either had a acute respiratory failure or an exacerbation of a chronic respiratory failure. And you need to know the difference between some of those, some disease processes that's, that may be associated with respiratory failure are asthma, really understand asthma. What are the, the, the lab tests that you're looking at? What is the acid base imbalance that the patients are presenting with with asthma? COPD is a big one. These patients are exacerbated and you have to think in, in COPD, a lot of these patients live on a certain amount of, they live in a, in a certain degree of hypoxia. And that's a big thing to understand. You don't wanna be oxygenating these patients up to 98, 99% uh, on the SpO2. Take that into consideration. Pneumonia is huge. A lot of patients get pneumonia, whether it be aspiration pneumonia or just some kind of uh, virus or bacteria that's causing it. And then of course, pulmonary embolisms. What are some things that may lead up to a pulmonary embolism? How can we tell if the patient has a pulmonary embolism? And then how do we treat these patients? Super important to know guys. That was a tidbit of some of the things I think that you can really focus on for your first three, four months as you transition into the ICU, or even if you're working in the ICU already and just need a little direction. And then there's other disease processes that you get into. We start about the whole GI system down there. You have the whole uh, endocrine system down there. You have a whole brain up here. That patient can get strokes and all these other type of uh, neurological disorders and disease processes. And of course you have the big mighty heart. So we went over learning about cardiogenic shock and learning about myocardial infractions. But the heart, there's so many things that can go wrong with the heart, and this is the source of our bodies. Learn the fundamentals of the heart, the pathophysiology of the heart, how it works, and why the rest of the body can't function if the heart isn't pumping adequately. So I hope you guys found some value in this video. If you have any suggestions on more videos that we should make, be sure to leave those down in the comment box too. I wish you all well, and be great. Peace.